Hello students, in this video I would like to discuss about transitive closure of a binary relationship. So first of all we will look at the formal definition of binary relationship. Let S be a set and R be a binary relation on S. Then R is a subset of S cross X. S cross S is nothing but the Cartesian product. So here I have an example. The set contains four elements 1, 2, 3 and 4. And here I have some ordered pairs. Actually this R is a subset of S crosses. Cartesian product of S and S. So this R can be considered as a binary relation on set S. Next is transitive relation. In mathematics a homogeneous relation R or a set S is transitive. If for all elements a comma b comma c in S, whenever R relates a to b and b to c, then R also relates a to c. Here in this example, I have a relation one comma two and also two comma three. So with the help of the transitive property, I can say relation one comma three is also existing in this relation. Similarly, when we look look at these two ordered pairs. There is a relation from 2 to 3 and there also there is a relation from 3 to 4. So we can say 2 is related to 4 also. That is the meaning of transitive relation. Next is transitive closure. The transitive closure of R is obtained by repeatedly adding a comma C to R for each a comma B element of R and B comma C element of R. So here I will Explain transitive closure with the help of the example. Here we are finding transitive closure of this relation R. These three elements will be in the relation set also 1, 2, 2, 3 and 3, 4. Here I have a transitive relation between these two elements. That is 1 is related to 2 and 2 is related to 3. So we can say 1 is related to 3. So this is added to the transitive closure. Now we look at this 3, 4 and 1, 3. It's 1, 3, 1 is related to 3, 3 is related to 4. So I can write 1 is related to 4. So 1, 4 is also introduced to transitive closure of R. Here I can find one more relation. 2 is related to 3 and 3 is related to 4. So I can write 2 is related to 4 also. So this is transitive closure of this relation R. With the help of transitive properties, we are generating as many relations and including in the transitive closure set. So that is the transitive closure of R is obtained by repeatedly adding a comma C to R for each a comma B element of R and B comma C element of R. So next we are going to study the relation between a binary relation and a graph. So how we can convert a binary relation to graph. Let S be a set and R be a binary relation on S. Then R is a subset of S crosses. And another assumption I are making, let G is a graph with E as set of edges and V as set of vertices. Then we can say V equal to S. That means S is a set which is defined in the relation and V is the vertices. And E is set of edges and R is set of relations. So set of relations can be considered as the edges. So here the same example what we have seen in the previous slide is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4. So here I have four elements. Those four elements are considered as four vertices 1, 2, 3 and 4. Here I have a relation 1 comma 2. That means there is an edge from 1 to 2. Here I have a relation 2 comma 3. There is an edge from 2 to 3. Here I have an edge from 3 to 4. So there is an edge from 3 to 4. So this is how we can represent a relation in the form of a graph. So the elements in the set will be considered as vertices and relation will be considered as edges. Here is a definition of transitive closure of a graph. Let a directed graph g equal to v comma e with vertex set v equal to 1 comma 2 comma up to n. We may wish to determine whether g contains a path from i to j for all vertex pairs i comma j element of v we define the transitive closure of g as graph g star equal to v comma e star where 
e star equal to i comma j there is a path from vertex i to j in g so this is a relation of the earlier example in the previous slide we already seen this transitive closure also what's the meaning here first three elements are already in the relation here we have three more elements 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 and 2 comma 4 this 1 comma 3 means there is a path from 1 to 3 in the graph there is no edge from 1 to 3 but there is a path from 1 to 3 in the graph similarly 1 comma 4 means there is a path from 1 to 4 in the graph 1 2 3 4 there is a path from 1 to 4 similarly one more element is there is a transitive closure 2 comma 4 that means there is a path from 2 to 4 actually there is no edge from 2 to 4 there is a path from 2 to 4. So for this algorithm an adjacency matrix will be given as a input and the output is also a matrix where for each entry is t of ij 1 if there is a path from i to j 0 otherwise. So this is the algorithm for transitive closure n equal to g dot b it is nothing but number of vertices in the graph you will create a Initial matrix T of 0, which is an n by n matrix. Here I have two for loops. For every pair of i and j, these statements will be executed. If i equal to j or i comma j element of g dot e, then T of i j equal to 1. So i equal to j means i and j are same. That means there is a path from vertex i to i. Or vertex, for example, there is a path from vertex 1 to 1. Or if i comma j is an edge in the graph, this matrix t of 0 will be initialized by 1. Otherwise, it will be initialized by 0. So, after that we have a 3 for loops. If you notice these 3 for loops, this is very much similar to what we have studied in the floyd Warshall algorithm. The algorithm to find transitive closure is of a graph is actually the modification of floyd Warshall algorithm to find all pair shortest path. The same logic is applied here. So here we consider each vertex is 1 by 1. First we will consider vertex 1. So when we consider a pair of vertices, we will check whether there is a path from those pair through vertex 1. After that we will try to include one more vertex 2 and we will test whether if we can find a path from a particular vertex i to j via 2. The same logic in floyd Warshall algorithm is applied here also. So, this is an example for transitive closure of a graph. So, this is the input graph. First, we will construct t of 0. This line number 3 to 7 is used to construct t of 0. If i equal to j, then t of i j of 0 will be 1. So, first of all, all diagonal elements will be filled with 1. There is an edge from 4 to 1. So, this cell is filled with 1. There is an edge from 2 to 4. So, this this cell is filled with 1. There is a edge from 4 to 3. So this cell is filled with 1. There is an edge from 3 to 2. So this is filled with 1. There is an edge from 2 to 3. So this cell is filled with 1. So next what we do is we will construct matrix T of 1 from T of 0. For that for every pair of vertices we will try to calculate this statement. This symbol denotes binary OR and this symbol denotes binary AND. So when we execute this statement for every pair of ij, there will be no change in this matrix. So t of 1 is also same as t of 0 in this example. So from t of 1 we are calculating t of 2 because the k value will be incremented. So here one value will be changed. Here the calculation is given t34 of 2 equal to t34 of 1. t34 of 1 is 0. 0 or t32 of 1. t32 of 1 is 1 and t of 2, 4 is also 1. So 1 and 1. That is 1. 0 or 1 is 1. So only updation happens is at this cell. Next from t2 we will calculate t3. Here also there is only one updation. The step is given in this so you can go through that from t3 we will calculate t4 
so here there are two updations the steps are given in the slide so if we notice the t4 matrix the cell 1 2 is 0 because there is no path from 1 to 2 similarly 1 3 is 0 there is no path from 1 to 3 and also 1 4 is also 0 since there is no path from 1 to 4 so again i am trying coming back to the algorithm so if we consider the complexity code from line number 3 to 7 it will be n square because here we have two for loops which are in nested format which will iterate up to n similarly for line number 8 to 12 here we have three for loops which are in nested format it will iterate from 1 to n so it is n cube so the running time of density closure is also of n cube okay that's all i want to share in this video thank you